I'm here at HPE Discovery in Las Vegas with Bob Nuller, and Synergy's got some new announcements that you've made over the course of this week. Can you talk about those? Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Jake. So obviously, we're always talking about new announcements at the Discover Show, and uh, Synergy's no exception to that. Uh, this time around, we're doing technology refreshes, and uh, we announced these yesterday at the show. Uh, obviously, Synergy is a platform, is a bladed form factor, and we're providing a very stable base by which we can refresh the technology so the customers can meet their needs. This time around, what we did is we actually did a refresh on the interconnect modules, the fabrics, if you will, uh, moving up to 100 gigabits in the uplinks for data traffic, as well as uh, 2550 gigabits, uh, gigabytes, uh, gigabits per second downlinks, uh, depending on the kind of arrangement they've got. Um, and what that does is does very fast data movement. Now we do we do that, frankly, in a master satellite kind of arrangement, which allows us to have up to three to five frames of very fast data movement with no hops between, and it still looks like a single entity to upstream switches. That particular switch or interconnect module capability also has some advanced features like Rocky and stuff, which some people are very interested in. So that's an example in the data movement area. We've also done some technology refreshes in the management area. So. Our management appliance we call Composer. Uh, it's the main brains of the system. Uh, everything in Synergy is designed for redundancy and hardware availability. Uh, so high availability, redundancy. Composer is no exception. We typically have two of these in a system where you have active standby failover uh, capability. And what we've done is we've refreshed the technology for that Composer, and our, we call it Composer 2. And what we've done is we should be able to see higher performance, a snappier user interface, uh, it has ILO remote access, which many customers are very interested in for remote data center access. And the other thing that comes with some of that is we also do a lot of security enhancement. Uh, it's very important. Security is one of these things that everybody's worried about. Uh, there's a lot at stake. We do this at both a system level, but also at a component level. So things like Composer, for example, Composer 2, includes things like our secure boot, secure boot capability, which is based on silicon rooted trust off of ILO. So, so how does, because uh, I, I know OneView is also baked into Synergy, so what, yep. what's the difference between the role that OneView plays and the role that the Composer plays? Yeah, great question. So Composer actually runs HP OneView, okay? So they are basically almost one the same thing, except that we have packaged OneView into a hardware appliance so it can have a, 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 a failover capability that's a hardware failover model. Now. The reality is some people call Composer HP OneView wrapped in tin. So it gives you an idea of kind of how, <laughs> how you, you can't separate the two. And so, but it is an interesting uh, thing you're asking because one of the ways people upgrade is just by upgrading their version of the software with OneView and they get more capability. So for example, the S-Flow aggregator we've talked about is a capability that came out in the 4.2 release earlier this year. And when they upgraded to that, uh, they automatically got capabilities. Another example of uh, upgrades in the OneView area that Synergy just rides along with is the capability of IPv6 only support uh, in the latest release. So that's a very good example. Now we've been talking about Composer. We talked a little bit about security. There's another key piece of uh, technology that we put out um, and uh, with the technology refresh this time around, and that's what we call the FrameLink module. Uh, the FrameLink module actually uh, has some extra ports on it this time around. They'll be supported in a future release. They are direct to the appliance ports, and uh, the, the functionality of the existing ports is the same as what we've had al already today, but it has uh, some differences, and one of the things that allows us to do is to have a longer distance connections to other frames. Remember, FrameLink module does exactly what it says. It links frames together. That's the way we can link up to 21 frames into a single management domain. But usually those are like side by side or something, right? Yeah, they can be. But the reality is the issue we have is that a lot of these frames may be somewhere else in the data center. It may be a remote subnet or even a scattered frame somewhere in a rack that's way across the room. And so the question is, how do I link to it? Previously, we've only been able to link with cables only up to 30 meters. Well, now we can link to things that are tens of kilometers away if we need to. Wow, so you got like uh, satellite offices or whatever that you're you linking. You could, more likely it's probably a campus uh, type arrangement or maybe uh, a data room that's across the building somewhere else is more, probably more typical. But it does allow for longer distance connections and still have the single management domain which is managed by composers. This is a, this is a big deal. And, and mind you, with that also, some other capabilities we've provided is more security, once again. Uh, the FrameLink module is a frame manager, if you will. If you think of Composer as the brains of the system, 
Uh, the FrameLink module is like the gatekeeper for the Synergy frame. It does a lot of the monitoring, it does auto discovery resources. It separates the management and the data networks to, pre to prevent design service attacks. But one of the key capabilities that we have with the FrameLink module is security also. And so in this round, you get things like secure start functionality, hardware root of trust capabilities, and also a TPM encryption for file encryption capabilities. So we're locking down the components as well as the system itself for security reasons. Very important. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm sure everyone cares about that. Absolutely, you better. I mean, one of the surprising statistics I heard a couple months ago from one of our security experts, they were talking about the amount of money that people get from financial breaches and stuff is more than all the money of the illegal drug traffic of all illegal dr drugs in the world. It gives you any of the magnitude of the problem we're facing. Wow, that's so a big problem. Yeah, yeah, that's just serious. So it's pretty cool. So, uh, and then of course we always talk about, uh, we have OneView 5.0 in the latest version of Composer and there's a lot of functionality that comes with that that we don't always talk about. In the storage area, we're doing some more Nimble support. Um, things like fiber channel capability for Nimble as well as the iSCSI. Of course, that also brings uh, info, full InfoSight support with it, which is something we're continuing to put across the entire product line. So predictive analytics is always a good thing. Being able to avoid downtime is always a good thing. So I, I, with the show here is interesting. We've been looking at a lot of stuff. We have a lot of solutions we're also demonstrating and stuff. FSI, BDI, uh, GPUs on demand, a whole host of things that people can look at and think about in terms of in addition to traditional applications and uh, cloud applications. So it's been, it's been a good show. That's good. All right. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks, Jake.